So I heard you wanted to get good aim. Well, I'm going to be making a video right now about a few good tips that I've learnt to have good aim. Now, the most common question that I get to ask is, what's your sensitivity? Um, how do you find the right sensitivity? And stuff like that. And basically, every single uh, question about aiming stems after that. Like, uh, it just like rolls afterwards, you know? Um, so I'm going to show you how I would first start, if you can't figure out even the starting point of what your sensitivity should be, here's a few tips that could tr uh, kind of help you. Uh, my f the first one, and this is what I got. Uh, I saw from Jason R when he played CSGO uh, quite a while ago. He said, if you want to find a good sense for yourself, you should shoot at a wall and then just try and track the dot on um on the normal on your on your sensitivity, right? I actually haven't done it with this sensitivity, um, and I yeah I haven't done it on this sensitivity, so I could possibly be bad on it and. I don't know, it's like sort of okay. You don't need to be pixel perfect, but if you feel like you can like sort of track it, then you should be fine. Um, and same with this, you should be able to track relatively decently your dot. And that would give you at least a good basis for your aim, you know? Um, another tip is I think that a lot of people overestimate mouse control. And that is like the thing um, aim trainers help you with. For example, like Kovacs will help you to track your target. Um, it will help you to flick to your target. But why, how do, does that even matter if you're always in a position where you can't utilize that aim? Like for example, if you're always playing terribly, um, positioning wise and cross set placement wise, where you're making the shot hard for yourself, um and giving yourself the disadvantage then like you're aiming no matter how much uh practice that you uh, put on your aiming you'll just never you'll never pay out because if someone's always behind you you having to do a 180 is going to be a lot harder um to achieve and you're going to fail more often than if you if that other person just had decent positioning and good cross air placement um this is something that i learned from cs uh quite well is just cross air placement always aiming at relatively head height and not hold not holding it to uh in the corner too close like if you hold it here then if someone moves out you have to you have to recorrect but if you're holding an angle and you hold let's say let's use the same thing let's say you hold here and someone peeks out like this your crosshair is going to be right on him. You won't have to move. You're making the shot as easy as possible for yourself. Where, like, if you had, um... If you had your crosshair on the edge, and this person jumps out, he's going to be pre-aiming you, uh, if he knows where you are, and you're going to have to flick to him. Now, of course, you'll probably see in my videos that I can do that, but, like, I... That's with so much practice of, um... Playing the game and stuff like that, and... I... I guess like the best way to put it is you, you shouldn't really aspire necessarily to have aim like me right at the start. You should inspire to do well. You should be inspiring to have good positioning and under like head glitching, stuff like that. And like playing like sort of like a bitch at the start. And then you can figure out how you want to play aggressively because then you'll be able to understand risk versus reward with like spawn points and stuff like that. So you want to learn to play like a bitch first in my opinion. And I feel like this is very important despite this being an aim guide because... The most important thing about um, the game isn't necessarily how like fast your flicks are. It's just you doing well, right? So you want to be able to have decent positioning and good cross-air placement. Um, and I'm now going to show um, scenarios that you can do in Modern Warfare. And I'll link to Kovacs scenarios that you can do to help your aim better. Um, I'm not a massive... I don't have a stupidly high uh, knowledge on Kovacs itself and like which ones are the best. So I'm just going to be uh giving scenarios that have been vetted by like the aimer 7 community and stuff like that and like my, my uh mods that follow this sort of thing you know i wanted to add before i go to the scenarios uh something that i think is a tip that i haven't heard other people say that i feel like would actually help a lot of people regarding aiming and in general just in play so and it's about cross set placement so for I think people are when it when it comes to cross air placement. The biggest part about cross air placement is visualization. So visualizing where and how will this person pick? 
because the, um if you think they're in a scenario where like they'll jiggle peek like for example let's say they uh don't know where you are at all you could probably hold the angle a tiny bit shallower um if they're a good player because they'll be like they'll try and uh like jiggle peek and as much as um that's a cs term and that's something that cs players do uh i i've seen controller players do a very similar technique um when you're watching like tommy or something from 100 thieves or when you're watching like headaches or something like that if they don't know someone's there they'll like they'll kind of run between angles and just check now because it's cod maybe holding the angle a bit further out is a bit better because people do uh check by sliding so it's harder to hit but um in general you want to visualize where the enemy will be and you want to visualize that and with your understanding of how the game is played now on top of that a lot of people um find my aim regarding pre fires and stuff like that very suspicious but if you watch my pre uh me aim and you watch my pre fires and it, usually when it ha um i get those kills it's because i'm flicking between not two enemies where i know they are but two angles that are common so if you're on shipment this is the easiest map to figure it out when you're on shipment there's not many places the enemy could be like you wouldn't you wouldn't like kill someone here and then just like flick uh flick here because this it's not likely for them to be there right but like if you kill let's say you're killing someone here uh someone peeks out someone peeks out here and um yeah if someone peeks out here you kill that person snapping to here or here is probably your best bet because that's probably the most likely where the next person is going to be. And this brings up my main point is you want to be snapping to like air uh, to the crosshair placement and the angle where they'll most likely be at. So you want to learn your crosshair placements of like where the people are most likely going to be. Um, you learn this from CS pretty quickly when you play CS is you learn where to aim, where you put your crosshair. Um, because you want to always give yourself the easiest shot and you want to be able and you're just like predicting where the person is going to be next so if i play if i wanted to play very bitch made i would be like clearing this angle and then clearing that angle and then clearing that angle and then just like you know doing this this is like what you would do in cs right now this game is a lot faster so that's you don't necessarily have to jiggle peek every single angle like this because yeah, it's it's a, it's a slow game. You wouldn't want to do this. Maybe in S and D, if you're in like a one before clutch, right, and you want to just like clear it every single angle, um, you would do that. But basically, this all ties to you want to be flicking to angles. You would you don't want to be um, people react. People um, people aim very uh, reactionary in this game, where like they will kill someone here and then they'll like just have their crosshair here and then they'll flick to someone and then they'll like flick to someone and they'll just have like their crosshair out in the open where like you could be if you want to have good, uh good cross placement make it easier for yourself just like flick to where you think the enemy is going to be next um and just have that pre-made in your head and that's how you would get faster reaction times as well because if you're flicking already to places where you think people are going to be so like if i'm here and i'm flicking here i'm already predicting in my head and visualizing a little head here so if i'm already visualizing it it's going to be easier for me to just like react to it um now maybe that's not a fucking science or anything like that but that's from my experience that's what it is if you uh pre-think of where someone is going to be it's i react faster to it and i feel like that is a common occurrence but it's not like scientific um and that again all relates to the point of like when you're you want with your crosshair placement you want to flick to the next angle you don't want to be just reacting to people you want to be um thinking about the next move yourself you want to be proactive you don't want to be reactive is the uh, best way to put it. i was blanking on the word you want to be proactive instead of reactive and being proactive is flicking between crosshair placements and learning where the enemy should be next um easier next and it, sadly in cod we don't have demo uh viewers uh we only have theater mode in like cod uh black ops cold war and that game's terrible but we don't have demo viewers so it's harder for people to think about like oh how would be uh where would the player be next that comes from game sense and i can't really like teach you game sense you just kind of have to play the game and go through your own experiences to learn that anyway i just wanted to say that before i went into the scenarios 
Alright, so now I'm going to show you some scenarios that you can do in Modern Warfare. Uh, this is so you can get better aim in Modern Warfare specifically, or Call of Duty specifically, because they all have very similar um, movement speeds and stuff like that. Or, in general, uh, just getting better aim and if you uh, when you don't have an aim trainer. I'm going to show you one for target switching. It depends what uh, you want to do necessarily. You, uh, I would always go free-for-all. I would always put... Plus the loss of difficulty and have the most spots poss possible, so you, uh, you're forced into uncomfortable positions where you have to flick to the person. Now you pick, uh, a lot of people ask me, why do you have the recruit, uh, the bot difficulty on recruit? And that's because we're not trying to outplay these bots, we're just trying to aim to them, right? Like, they're just targets. We're not trying to, like, make sure we don't get hit while doing that. I'm guessing, like, you can, f um, do that. Like, if you want to better your movement alongside it, you could be versing, like, I don't know, regular or, um hardened bots and stuff like that and try and dodge their bullets while tracking them but for the sake of what i do to warm up and to get uh somewhat better aim you can just do this now there's multiple ways to do it i guess if you want to do target switching there could be a possibility um that you just put it on hardcore right and you just flick to people but that's like the tile frenzy of cod like you're never going to be, unless you're going to play hard you're never going to be in a situation where you just need to flicks to someone. You need to still do that tiny bit of tracking afterwards, you know? Um, so, yeah. I wouldn't mess with the max HP until we get to the next um, scenario that I'm going to bring up. So, I'm going to just show, like, 20 seconds of me flicking and what I do regarding this. Alright, so what I do, and if anyone's helped call my train, uh, stream, I just flick between people. I just try and snap to people as quickly as possible. I don't care about staying alive, I just care about getting those kills, you know? And I've gone over this in my uh, How to Get Aim by Aim uh, video, but I thought to make this a tiny bit better because I only showed like one aspect of it, and I, this is just how I warm up, you know? Um, and yeah. You, if you do this enough, you'll just like, like any sort of aim training, uh, you'll build on, people say muscle memory, I wouldn't call it necessarily muscle memory, I would call it, um, I, I call it just mouse control in general, because I think muscle memory makes it so people restrict themselves to their sense a bit too much, when you can really just change between your senses pretty, pretty freely, like it'll probably take you a bit, like it'll probably take you like a week max to get used to your new sense. Because, like, I think it took me two to three days to get used to this sense, and I was on I was on 5.8 at 800, and now I'm on 8.4. It took me, like, no, I was on 9.2. And after I went from 5.6 to 9.2. Um, and then I moved it down to 8.4, and that took me, like, half a day to get used to um, 8.4. So I think, like, the mo I think people, um put too much stock in sticking to one sensitivity necessarily. Uh, now, if you want to be like 100% consistent and make sure that like, it is how you're playing that's the issue, um, then you should stick to the same sense. But um, if you're seeing that you have like issues with like flicking to people or something like that, maybe your sense is a bit too low. Um, it, in the sense of like, if you're, if you're like flicking and you're getting like here and you're like always under flicking. If you're always under flicking, you probably should up your sense, right? And if you're always over flicking, you probably have a high, too high sense. Um, I know that's like hard, but um, I would stick to one sense and then see like what issues that you have with that sense um, after a while. And then you can change it. I wouldn't just keep like, if I first started off, I wouldn't uh, really, really change my sense all the time. It has to be like, after you realize that you have an issue of like constantly over flicking and you never under flick, for example. Um, if you have both of the issues, I'm just set, I'm guessing that your aim is just not trained. Um, you just don't have like the good enough mouse control at that point. And you should just get used to it instead of um, switching the sense. I feel like a lot of people get into limbos of switching their sense too much, but I also feel like people um, have the idea that you can't switch your sense um, because they'll fuck up everything. When that's just not the case. Um, like, if that was the case, then people with um, mouse itself, like, and they, when they change their curves, it would be fucking them up way too much because you're changing multiple aspects of your sensitivity. Alright, I'm once I die, I'm going to switch back to, um... Actually, fuck it. I'm going to end it now. Okay, so now we're going to set up uh, what I would like to call the tracking scenario. Where... 
um, the best way to do it, in my opinion, is maybe uh, you lower the bots down to a, t a tiny, a smaller level, because you you're aiming to track these people a bit better, um, and you don't want to get like shot by like five different people, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be upping the max health. Now, you can up it to 200, you can up it to 300. I'd, I personally, if you want to learn like super tracking, I'd up, up it to 300. Uh, this is like, you could up it to just like 250 because that's Warzone. Like if you really want to learn how to track people on Warzone. But up it to 300. Um, because like, it doesn't hurt to over, to like, learn how to flick like a bit better than, um, what's needed. It doesn't hurt to do that. So when it comes to this scenario, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. You do this so you have to stay on target the, uh, for the majority of the time. And this just will help you a lot because what the previous one before helps you with very tiny tracking and this one helps you with tracking a lot more because you just have to stay on the target more. Um, yeah. It's, I think it's, yeah. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. This is another scenario which is good, just like high HP, making sure that you have to stay on the target. And this will help most, I think, with Warzone because you have to stay on the target more with, the most with Warzone. Alright, so that is my conclusion of the aim tips that I feel I have the confidence to be able to teach other people. Um, I'm not someone that is a teacher regarding this sort of thing, I just played a bunch. But these are the sort of things that I picked up on that kind of helped me quite a bit uh, to get better at the game. So I hope it helped you, I know this is a bit longer and uh, not my usual content, but thank you for watching.